Good evening, everybody. I pray that blessed you. I know it blessed me. Stephanie, Vanessa, great, great, great job. Thank you for setting us up tonight to worship. Uh, my wife and I want to thank all of you for being with us here tonight, prayer meeting. So let's get right to it. Um, I know uh, we all normally welcome each other, but you know what? We've welcomed the Lord. Let's, let's just take time right now and just begin to pray. Right? So wherever you are at in your living room, wherever you are at, just begin to worship the Lord. We gave you a couple of worship songs. So let's just begin to worship God. Thank you, Lord. We bless your wonderful name, God. You are holy in all of your ways. Come on, I don't want to just hear me pray. I want to hear all of you praying out there with me. Hallelujah. Let's begin to magnify the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's begin to lift up his name tonight, for he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. We're going to take 50 minutes, this one hour. Hallelujah. The 50 minutes left to pray and to praise and to worship and to call on God. Come on, everybody. Get it. Get, get, get everyone in the room. Hallelujah. Get your praise on right now. Let's, let's focus for one hour. Hallelujah. Let's look to God in this next hour. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. This is not the time to be embarrassed or ashamed or shy. Come on, let's call on God right now. Let's lift up our voices. Let's lift up our hands and let's begin to exalt his name. Hallelujah, Lord. You're worthy of the praise, God. Worthy is the lamb that was slain. God, we honor you. We honor you right now, Lord. We've worshiped you. Oh, God, we sang to you. And so now, God, we call on your name. We lift up our voices. We pray together as your people, as a church. We bond together, even at a distance. We bond together in the spirit, oh God. And we thank you, oh God, because you are great and, and you are mighty and you are all powerful. Hallelujah. You are the beginning and the end, the alpha, the omega. Hallelujah. The first and the last, oh God. Thank you, Lord. We look to you tonight, oh God. We look to you right now, Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. Even before we ask God, we're going to give you praise. We're going to give you that which belongs to you. We're going to honor you. We're going to exalt you. We're going to lift you up. Even though we may be in some kind of difficulty, even though in the midst of problems or turmoil or anguish, but God, yet will we praise you. Yet Will we lift up our voices tonight, God, to honor you? Hallelujah. In spite of all that is going on around us, God, surrounded by enemies, surrounded by circumstances, surrounded by, by a lot of negativity, God, yet in the midst of all that, we will praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. For you are great in all of your ways, O oh God. You are holy and you are just and you are true and you are good, O oh God. And we declare this tonight as a body, as the church, O oh God. Thank Thank you, Father, for your presence that is even now descending upon every believer, every home that is calling upon the name of the Lord. You are inhabiting, oh God, you are dwelling in the praises of your people. And so tonight, God, we lift up our eyes to the heavens, oh God. We lift up our eyes, oh God, from whence cometh our help. And so, Lord, we bless, we bless we bless your name right now, God. We bless your name. Your people bless you all across this city, O oh God. Your people exalt you all across this nation, this world, God, that might be tuning in right now into this Instagram and Facebook Live. God, thank you that we can bind together in prayer, God, and call upon your name, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity. And though we may not be meeting physically together in a building, Thank you, God, for the technology that enables us, oh God, to still come together in heart and in purpose and in mind and in spirit, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless our time together, Lord. We look to you. We humble ourselves in your presence, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. You're worthy. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, oh God. Blessed be the name of the Lord, God Almighty. Hallelujah. You reign forevermore, O oh Lord. You reign forevermore, O oh Lord. Hallelujah, God. Jesus, there is no one like you, O oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you for your care. Thank you for your concern. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your love, O oh God. We enter into your courts with thanksgiving and into your gate. We enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise, O oh God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, great shepherd. 
Hallelujah. Your people bow before you tonight, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. We are hungry and thirsty for you tonight, God. We are hungry, oh God, and thirsty for your presence, God. We need more of you, Lord. We need more of your presence, God. We make room. We intentionally come tonight, God, asking, oh God, that you would help us to make room, make more room in our minds and in our hearts, oh God. Hallelujah, Father. Do it, Lord. Do it, Holy Spirit, even now, God. And as we empty ourselves, as we exhale, oh God, everything that is not of you, we inhale your presence, God. We take it in, God. We desire it. We, we long for it, oh God. We need, we need more. We need more. We need more of you, oh God. We admit and we confess that we need more, oh God. Hallelujah. In the midst of all that is going on in our world today, God, we confess we need more of you, Jesus. We humble ourselves. We ask, oh God, that you would just touch, touch, oh God, touch us all tonight, God. Even as we seek your face, God, tonight, Lord. Right now, Father, in your presence, oh God, in your presence right now, God, we ask, Lord. Oh, we ask, we ask, we ask, God. We ask, Lord. Ask that it might be given. Hallelujah. Seek that you might find. Knock that it may be opened. Matthew 7, 7 declares these words, the words of Jesus. And tonight we've entered into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. And now why don't we take some time to pray? Pray for petitions. Pray for those things that are on our heart. Right now, I'm going to ask you to, to go ahead and put those petitions in that comment section right now. Instagram, Facebook, come on right now. Just take a minute. We're going to ask God. We're going to believe God for needs that he's going to answer. And so take a minute right now. Just write your prayer request right in that box. It may be for someone, a loved one, someone that is sick, someone with coronavirus, someone that's in need, someone that needs a job. Someone that lost a job, come on, just put your needs down as a sign that we are letting it go and giving it to God tonight. Hallelujah, right now in his presence. Hallelujah, right now in his presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, let's intercede. Intercede for those that need, hallelujah, prayer. Intercede for those right now that need a miracle. Hallelujah, we are standing in the gap as intercessors for other people. Even right now, let's lift one another up. Let's lift up those needs. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for all those needs in a few minutes. Hallelujah. I, wanna, I, wanna, I want you to just put those needs in the, in the comment section, and we're going to pray for that. And as you're putting that in, why don't we pray for something that, two things that the Lord put on my heart. Um, one is, let's, let's pray for the reopening of New York. We know that the governor said that uh, May 15th, and uh, I don't know what the latest is, but we know we were shooting for May 15th. It doesn't look like we're ready. But as we begin to open up little by little, uh, let's just pray that, that God help us with this process, that God would help our leaders. So I've got on the phone, I've got uh, Nat, Pastor Natalie Nieves, Pastor Natalie and Ariel are watching from their home. And so, Natalie, if you're there, I'm going to ask that you just go ahead and pray. Pray that God would just help our leaders and everyone uh, with the reopening of New York City. Go ahead and pray, Nat. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. God, we ask, oh God, even now, oh God, that you would begin, God, to even just loosen the strength of this virus oh god and this the numbers of this virus oh god and that we would begin to see regions of new york oh god open up on may 15th oh god we pray oh god for safety god for protection god as regions open up oh god we pray oh god for that first region that first phase of construction workers and agriculture god and manufacturing god we pray for the protection of these workers oh god as they open up oh God and we pray oh God that criteria God will continue to be met God so that in another two weeks God other parts oh God can begin to open up oh God that our economy will begin to open up again oh God 
God, I pray even for New York City, God, for the five boroughs, oh God, for Nassau County and Suffolk County, God, I pray that we would be able to meet, God, those criterias, oh God, God, and that we wouldn't go past that June 7th date, oh God, that we wouldn't go past that or that it would not linger any longer, oh God, that we would also be able to open up, God, that you will cause these numbers to decline, oh God, we pray, oh God, for the next phases of administration and real estate and restaurants and recreation and even education oh god to reopen oh god we pray oh god for your continual protection over health care workers and police and fire department god and all those god who work in the supermarkets at supermarkets and in transit god we pray oh god that you would speak healing oh god healing and restoration over our city oh god healing and restoration over our state oh god restore bodies god restore our economy Oh God, restore God our, our farming industry, God, our meat industry, God, restore, oh God, do what seems totally impossible, oh God, to the human eye in this hour, oh God. I pray for our governor, for Governor Cuomo, God. I pray that you give him wisdom, God. I pray for the county executives and for uh Mayor de Blasio, God. I pray that you give them wisdom, oh God. These are people, God, that do not know you, God, but you're able to speak to them, oh God. Even the way you spoke to Nebuchadnezzar and Belshazzar in their dreams, oh God, and you gave them no rest, oh God, and they had to seek out counsel of men and women that sought you, God. They sought out Daniel's wisdom, God, because you... You, you were his God because you were Daniel's God. I pray, God, that you too would speak to these governors, speak to the mayor, oh God. God, I pray for your watchmen to arise, God, your Daniels, your Nehemiahs, your Esthers, God, to be intercessors, God, on our city walls, oh God. God, you changed edicts and decrees, God, and even death sentences because your people stood in the gap, fasted and prayed, oh God. So we stand in the gap tonight, God, that you would turn things around, oh God. We pray for our neighborhoods, our city, our state, Lord God, that you would do the impossible and the exceedingly abundantly, oh God. We believe, God. God, that you are able to do it, God. The things that you did, God, in the Bible that we read today, you're able to do in our day, in our time, oh God. And so we ask, oh God, and we believe in Jesus' name, God. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Thank you, Pastor Natalie. Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. Hallelujah. Believe in God for a smooth reopening. Uh, hallelujah. That everything would go well that everything would just begin to open up in a safe and wise manner. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Let's be in agreement this week um, that everything start to return to normal. You put your prayer requests in the comment box, and why don't we pray for all those requests, even right now. I just want to pray for all the needs that were put in. Uh, those comment sections, the names of people. If you haven't done it, go ahead, put the names. Let's pray for all those needs, all those people and situations that are in that comment section right now and join us. I, I want you to agree with us, but I want you also to lift up your voice and just pray. Come on. There is no one like you, God. There is absolutely no one like you. So we know we go to the source, oh, Father. We go to the one who loves us. We go, oh, Father, to the one to lit the one who listens to our every prayer, our every cry. We go to him, oh God, that can supply all of our needs, that can heal the brokenhearted. So I ask right now, oh God, that you would heal the brokenhearted, oh God those of us that are in a, in a situation where we didn't expect to be oh god but we find ourselves in a situation father so i pray oh god that your mighty hands would be upon us oh god that your mighty hands father would protect us that your mighty hand would revive those that are dealing with sicknesses and dealing with unemployment and dealing oh god and dealing with with working with the children that are our home at home 
home, oh God. We pray, oh God, that you would heal the brokenhearted, that you would heal the minds, oh God, that you would heal depression, Father, that you would bring joy to the joyless, oh God, and fathers to the fatherless, oh God, and mothers to the motherless, oh God. We ask, oh God, that you would be our father and our mother and our protector and our guide, oh God. We ask for your protection. We ask for your wisdom most of all. But God, God, we need you. During this time, we need you more than ever, Father. Everything else will come. Everything else will flow into place, oh God. But we need you, so we seek your face today. We seek your heart today. We seek your mind today. We seek your will today, oh God, in every situation that we are facing, oh God. So I ask that you give our people wisdom, that you give those who are seeking you and are running after you, that you would give them wisdom and answers and every. Lord, that you are the only one that can answer. So we pray, oh God, that you would even wake them up in the middle of the night to pray. That you would quicken our hearts, oh God, for pe- that, that we need to pray for people. We need to pray, oh God. We need to be on our knees, oh God. We need to seek your face, oh God, because you are a true God. You are our closest friends, oh God. There's no one like you. So we entrust everything upon you, oh God. We entrust our heart's desire to you. We entrust our mind to you. We entrust, oh God, every cell that is within us, oh God. Let it cry out to you. Let it cry out, oh God, like no other time in history, Father. We need you. We need you. Let us cry out. We need you, oh God, because we know that you are faithful and that you will hear us and that you will answer, oh God, because that's the kind of God you are. That's the kind of father you are. So we're putting our trust in you. We're putting our desires in you. We're putting everything, oh God, at the foot of the cross, oh God, at the foot of the cross. So God, we thank you because we know that you are answering. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. In the perfect time, hallelujah. Yes, yes. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, type in amen. Type in amen in that comment box. If you believe that God is moving upon your request, we need to, and maybe he hasn't answered you yet, keep praying. Keep praying. Pray and keep on praying. Believe once and keep on believing. Amen. So just just agree with us and say, yes, amen. Lord, I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. Let's pray while we're in this mode of prayer. Can you do me a favor? Can you? Oh, you got that? Okay. Thank you. Um, While we're in this prayer mode right now, let's pray for one other thing that I felt the Lord put on my heart. Um, Let's let's pray for marriages. Let's pray for marriages. Um, Here's what I think is happening during this quarantine. For many, I think it's been a blessing for many marriages. Uh, being together, spending a lot of time together. Uh, there's growth there. The kids are around, and, and it's just been, it's been great. It's been something maybe you never had before. And I believe that there are others that you're struggling, and this has really uh, been tough for you. Um, you know, my, when I tell my wife that I'm, I'm going to go to the store, she gets really happy. I don't know why. When I leave the house, she, she gets really happy. <laughs> I don't know why that is, guys. I don't know. I don't know. But, uh, but I want to pray for marriages because I believe that there's extra pressure. Uh, there's extra tension, some because of finances, because of jobs, because the kids are around 24-7 and you can't even leave the house or whatever the case may be. And, and maybe in your marriage it's created some, some extra stress. You know what? If both of you are sitting in front of this uh, phone or iPad or TV right now, uh, I want to pray. And if your spouse is not there with you, then either call him or call her over or go to them and take the phone with you. And and let's just pray and let's ask if we can just pray for marriages right now. I'll give you a second to uh, get over there for them to come your way. And, uh, and I want to pray. And I want you to just hold hands and 
if your spouse is not around, maybe your spouse is at work, then obviously stand in the gap. But but let's pray. Let's pray this. We want this to be a time where God uses this pause, that it be a positive thing, that it, we get to reconnect with him. And maybe we get to reconnect as husbands and wives and and marriages would just grow and that kids would be blessed as as a result of parents and marriages uh, being more in one accord. Okay, so let's let's pray. Let's pray right now. Heavenly Father, I, I pray right now. I, 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 a couple hours ago, you put this on my heart to pray for marriages. And I, I believe, Lord, it was for a reason. I believe that many are struggling right now. Many are hurting. And God, they don't know what to do. And they feel caged, Lord, because of the stay home order or the pause. And in many cases, some are maybe driving each other nuts. But God, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would just come and bring clarity, bring communication, bring all those things that might be lacking right now into every manage, at marriage. I speak life. I speak the word of the Lord over every household that is struggling right now. Lord, I pray for unity at the top. I pray that as we draw closer to you, Lord, as individuals, that you would draw us closer as a couple. I pray, Holy Spirit, for your blessing upon every home and upon specifically every marriage, every husband, every wife, God, in the midst of this pause order, in the midst of this quarantine, in the midst of this time out, that, God, you would use it to bless, Lord, that uh, conversations would begin to be had, Lord, that, that a talking through would begin, that peace treaties would be done even now, God, in the name of Jesus, that, that both parties would come out of their respective corners, God, and meet each other halfway and, and come before you and, and humble themselves, Lord. I, I pray for miracles, miracles, oh God, miracles, changes of heart, changes of mind, oh God. Even now, Lord, I pray for the relief Oh, God, that can only come from the Spirit of God. I pray for a release from heaven, God, a blessing, God, over every marriage right now, God, that is suffering, that is struggling. Right now, God, I pray for your Holy Spirit to come. And as we come into agreement, Lord, just rain down like the dew from heaven, like the anointing falling down from Aaron's beard, God, as you poured the anointing oil over him. I pray, God, for a release, a new unction, God, a new love, a, a new patience, a, a, a new beginning, God, new grace, new strength. Even now, God, I pray, Lord, have your way, God, in our lives, in our homes, Lord, and, and if we need to apologize, give us the ability, oh God, give us the words, God, let us not stammer, let us not struggle, but let it be released under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. God, help us that you would be glorified, God, that in our marriages you would be glorified, not just in our lives as individuals, as singles, oh God, but plural, oh God, in our marriages be glorified, God, in the way we operate, the way we function, the way we deal with one another. Be glorified, God, I pray, in this process, Jesus. Hallelujah. We prayed for the kids several weeks ago. We prayed for the kids, and now we pray for the parents, God. Pray for the parents, the marriages, oh God, those that are together, oh God, right now under the same roof. Jesus, oh God, help, God. We thank you. Get all the honor. Get all the glory, God. And we rebuke the enemy, the devourer, that would love to destroy, to tear down, to rip apart, oh God, in the name of quarantine, in the name of a virus, in the name of a pandemic. Oh God, no, we speak peace in the midst of the pandemic, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for this time to pray and to come into agreement. We give you all glory, all honor for the new beginning that is beginning right now in the name of Christ our Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We believe you for this right now in the name, the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. I believe God laid that on, on my heart for a reason. So now listen. Listen to what the Spirit of God will say to you in terms of next steps. Just obey. Follow the promptings of the Lord. 
and, and, and he'll, he'll do his part. Amen. So glad that you're here with us. Let me, let me take a few minutes to share something with you from the word of God. I pray you feel better that loads are lifted as we prayed. We've been, we've been reading the past one, two, three, I think four weeks. One, two, three, four. Yeah, this is the fourth week, us talking about Psalm 23. And we took week one to talk about verse one, two, and three. And then we've taken the last two weeks to talk about verse four four and five and now we get to the last verse verse six and uh, I'll read it I'll say I, I want to say two main things about this and then we're gonna pray and I'll give you some announcements on the way out Psalm 23 verse 6 says this well you know what let's just read this for, for context sake let's let's read the whole thing together it's a beautiful psalm written by David and as soon as it comes up on my iPad I will read it to you here we go. Uh, if you have it, say amen. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. You must have said amen. I'm sorry. All right. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close behind me. Your rod and your staff protect me and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. And we get to verse 6. Surely your goodness and unfailing love, other translations use mercy. Surely your goodness and mercy or your unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will live in the house of the Lord forever. A very beautiful, beautiful psalm. And I want to say a couple of things to you, two main points, uh, very briefly before we pray and go back to whatever we need to do tonight. One thing that I've noticed uh, is the first three verses, David is talking to us or telling us about God. The Lord is my shepherd. He leads me besides uh, to green pastures. He, uh, he leads me besides still waters. Um, he gives me strength. He, he directs my paths. And then the last three verses, we, we, we find David talking to God. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for because you're with me, God. He talks to God. In verse 6, he continues that. He says, surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me or follow me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. And two of the things that come to mind when I read this one verse. David right here is reiterating one of his conclusions to this psalm. And it's this, whether I'm in calm waters or green pastures, nice, peaceful serenity, or whether I'm in the valley of the shadow of death and surrounded by enemies, the conclusion is the same. Goodness and mercy, God's goodness and God's unfailing love will follow me all the days of my life, will follow me wherever I go, and here's the one thing, I, the, the first point that I want to leave you with. When you are in God's care, and remember this, especially now in the midst of everything that's going on across this world, when you are in God's care, when he is your shepherd and you are his sheep, understand that there is nothing that can remove you, remove you from this position. There is nothing that can stop this from happening. It is automatic. When you follow the leader, when you follow the shepherd, goodness and mercy follow you. And whether you are in the valley and, and in the worst moments in life, you follow God into those valleys, goodness and mercy follow you there, uh, follow along right after you. Whether you're in the green pastures or still waters, there, 
his goodness and mercy along with you as well. There is nothing that can stop this from happening. The Apostle Paul says this in Romans chapter 8, verse 38 and 39. He says this, and again, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. He says, and I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither not death, nor life, neither angels, nor demons, neither our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And I want you to understand this procession. God leads. We follow as sheep following the shepherd. We follow him. And guess what follows us? Goodness and mercy. Goodness and unfailing love as, as benefits. As result of following God, these things follow us and go wherever you go. Okay, as we follow the shepherd, these things will follow us as results and as blessings. And so understand, ladies and gentlemen, that's part of what serving God is all about. There are these, these benefits that come along with, with serving him, with putting him, with having him as your leader, as your Lord, as your Savior, as your shepherd. Now, just in the way that, and, and remember, whether you're in the valley or on the mountaintop, this is true. The opposite of this can also be true. What, what do I mean by that? Well, the minute we stop following the leader, does that necessarily mean that the blessings stop following us? And I believe they do because it's all, all good things come from above, Right? All blessing comes from God. And so understand that if the shepherd leads left, but we go right, do, do, we, do we expect the, the goodness and the mercy of God to go right or left? I believe they, they cease to follow us when we've ceased following God. And so I want to encourage you tonight. Follow the shepherd because goodness and mercy will follow you wherever you go. And it's so very, very important to understand how God has laid this out. The minute you and I decide to go a different way, there is no guarantee, right? There's no certainty that things are going to go well for you, that the blessings and the mercy of God is going to follow you. At that point, we have chosen our own way, and we are in line or in position to experience the consequences of our own decisions. But when we follow the shepherd, goodness and mercy follow as a result. And that's why it's so important. Many people, they've ceased following the shepherd and are wondering why heaven has closed up, why things keep happening to them. You need to come back. You need to follow the leader again. The shepherd has gone a different way. You need to get back in line with where he is. And many times when we've gone our own way, um, there's two analogies that came to mind when I, two pictures that I, that I came. When we go our own way, sometimes God, I think, is like the shepherd that leaves the 99 and goes after the one. And I think that that's the heart of God, to pursue us, to follow us, to get us. But then there's a part of me that also believes that God sometimes, when we've chosen to go our own way, much like the prodigal son, that he doesn't necessarily pursue. He waits. He waits for us to realize the error of our ways, to see that goodness and mercy, God's unfailing love, have, have, have not followed us. And he waits 
And when, he, when we come to our senses, here's the good part, that thank God that when we come to our senses, right, and, and whether it's that he pursued us, like the, like the shepherd pursuing the one and leaving the 99, and we come to our senses, and wherever we are at, there is God. There's also a part of me that says God waits. And when we decide to come back to God, I, I have this image of the prodigal son. And if you remember that, that parable, the father necessarily didn't go looking for the boy, for that which was lost. He waited. And I think there's a part of God sometimes that waits for us to come to our senses. And when we do, he's not there to condemn or to judge or to uh, punish. He's there with open arms to say, come home, son. Come home, daughter. Follow me. And as you follow me, the blessings, the goodness, and the mercy of God will follow you. The second thing that I want us to take from this verse is found at the second half of that verse 6. David said, I will live in the house of the Lord forever. And what I love about this verse is this. This life of present security on earth also leads to eternal life and our future security in heaven. You see, what this verse is saying is as I follow the shepherd, I can expect in my life blessings. I can expect the goodness and the mercy and the unfailing love of God. I can expect it because I'm following the shepherd. But he's also saying, you know what? There's this security with knowing that that relationship, that that's what I can expect. But he takes it further. He said, hey, not only is that a blessing here on earth, but guess what? I will live in the house, in the presence of God forever. And what that tells us is, hey, there's, there's security. There's a present security here on earth with, what, with, with, the, with God's blessing and his mercy and his love. But then it also leads to eternal life and eternal security that, that this following of this leader, following the shepherd will also lead us to this place of eternal security in heaven. Oh, what joy, what peace of mind to know that whenever God calls my name and my number is up and God says it's time for you to come home, that I don't have to wonder what happens when we die. Where am I going? Ah, oh, but I know that there's a mansion waiting for me. There's a mansion waiting for you. That God has prepared a place for us and there is a security in knowing that it ain't over here. If life has only just begun. Listen to what Revelation chapter 7, verse 16 and 17 says. They will never again be hungry or thirsty. They will never be scorched by the heat of the sun. For the Lamb on the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of life-giving water. And God will wipe every tear from their eyes. What a picture of peace and tranquility. And here we have, even in heaven, as the shepherd has led us, here he is, the lamb on the throne will be their shepherd, the book of Revelation says. And he's going to lead them, he's still leading them to, to springs of life-giving water. And, 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 and here's the added blessing that we see in heaven. He will wipe away every tear. Do you know that in heaven there will be no more hurt, no more pain, no more sickness, no more sin, no more death. We'll be in the presence of perfection, in the presence of our God. And all those tears that we shed on, on earth, God will, will wipe them all away in his presence because he's faithful. And this is what you can expect when you follow the leader, when you follow the shepherd and goodness and mercy follow you all the way all the way to heaven hallelujah hallelujah thank you father before we leave tonight before i give you some announcements and can we just pray can we pray tonight just close your eyes We wait on you, Lord. We wait on you, Lord. Goodness and mercy are to follow me as I follow the shepherd. 
and there are many that are experiencing that, but maybe you're here tonight and you've lost track. You've come off, your train has come off the rails. You've gone your own way. And things have happened. And you've wondered, where is goodness? Where is mercy? Where is God's unfailing love? And all the while, you've ceased to see that you've stopped following the shepherd. You've gone your own way. Tonight, God waits for you with open arms. God might be right in the very room where you are at right now, ready, because he's gone after you. As a shepherd has left the 99 to go out after you. And he's waiting for you to just give him access to your life again. That you could then begin to see goodness and mercy activated in your life again. That this relationship would be restored from here to earth all the way to heaven. Maybe that's you tonight. And if so, would you, would you reconcile with God tonight? We've gone through this four-week series talking about Psalm 23 in the middle of a pandemic. God is leading us. God has been faithful. And yes, there's some hurt. There's, there's some, uh, some wounds that have happened along the way. But yet you will see the goodness and God's unfailing love in the valley of the shadow of death. You will see the presence and the power of God, the love of God. Although you may be surrounded by your enemies. Today, don't give up. Don't give up hope. God is there. Let him in. Let him in. Return to him tonight. Can I pray? Father, in Jesus' name, you see where every heart, where every life is right now. And I pray you would extend your hands of love and healing where there is hurt, where there is anger, where there is bitterness, where there are questions and doubts as to where you were, God, when I needed you. I pray, Lord, that you would lead people back to you, back into your presence, back into relationship, back into right standing with God. Father, we need you, Lord. Right now, God, we confess our need. We ask that you would touch us and be with us. We make room for you, Lord. We receive you afresh and anew. We repent of our own ways, God. Forgive us if we haven't followed the leader. Forgive us if we've gone our own way, done our own thing. Oh, God, thank you that you're always there waiting with open arms ready to forgive, ready to build up, ready to pick up, ready to restore, ready to renew, ready to forgive. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for unmerited favor. And I pray that you show this tonight to every one of us, that you would get all the honor and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. If you've renewed your relationship, if you've rededicated your relationship to God tonight, or maybe you're giving your life to the Lord for the first time tonight, you've, you've accepted him, you let him in, can you let me know? Send me an email, selahcitychurch at gmail.com, selahcitychurch at gmail.com. Let me know. We want to be able to help you with some next steps. We want to get you plugged in. We want to get you back on the right track that you would experience the presence of God like never before and experience goodness and mercy like never before. Amen. Let's go through some announcements before we let you go. Uh, dear, do you know what the first announcement is? <laughs> Why don't I just give you the first announcement? <laughs> All right. Talk to us about what's happening tomorrow. So we always try to meet the needs of our people. And um, when we have English prayer on Wednesday, we then have, guess what, Pastor... Andy, stop, Pastor Andy, yes, I know, I know, so Pastor Andy does our prayer on Thursday, and it's at one o'clock, the link is on our website, and on all our social media, so you can go there, but, so we do English, we meet um, our English people, and then that same week, we then do Spanish with Pastor Andy, so we are meeting the needs of all our people. It's always the opposite because we want to meet the needs of our people. So 
Zoom. Zoom prayer. Oración en Zoom mañana a una con Pastor Andy. Hey, we also, I want to tell you about this. Um, I got two minutes here, so I'm going to make this quick. We have a new series starting on Sunday. It's called From Pause to Play. Uh, see what we did there? Uh, from Pause to Play. Uh, and it's a three-week series <laughs> starting this Sunday, right? Three weeks. Uh, we're going to begin to lay out our mission here at Selah City Church. So you do not want to miss week one that starts this Sunday, okay? From Pause to Play begins this Sunday. Sunday. So 10 o'clock English service, 12 o'clock Spanish, or you can watch the replays whenever you get up and out of bed and in your pajamas. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, last thing, uh, we're going to have a meet the team Zoom meeting right after this. All right. So immediately following this link, if you want to meet the team, uh, we'll be on there. My team will be on there right after this service. Just look at the link. Uh, on Facebook, Instagram, hit the Zoom link. Let's chat for a few minutes. Would love to say hello. That's right after this service. You'll see it. Uh, quick thing, offering. Uh, if you want to give tithes, offerings, we have our giving link there as well. Uh, on Facebook, Instagram is our uh, giving link. As well as our website. Go check out SelahCityChurch.org. SelahCityChurch.org. Our website is up and running. Or you can mail your tithes and offerings or donations, which are all tax deductible, by the way, to Say La City Church. You'll see it there on your screen. Say La City Church, P.O. Box 381-180, Gardner's Avenue, Levittown, New York, 11756-3762. We love you. God bless you. And we'll see you soon. Ciao.